Welcome to the next video in this series on optical remote sensing as part of the subject Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS at the Australian National University. My name is David Summers and this uh, next video is going to look at image visualisation. Image visualisation is an important step in, in, uh, in image interpretation. There's a lot we can learn about the imagery from, the, um, from a simple visual interpretation and this relies on things like uh, the tone, different tones within the imagery, the shape of objects, um, and the, the size and pattern and association between objects within the image and also textures and shadows within the image are important in interpreting what the image consists of, how different objects within the image relate to each other, how they change over time. These are all uh, concepts that can contribute to our visual interpretation of the imagery. Uh, an important part I left out there was colour. Uh, obviously uh, colour is a very useful part of understanding what's happening um, but it's not as simple as uh, just simply viewing red, green and blue. As we've discussed previously, uh, optical remote sensing relies on a, a wide range of uh, spectral wavelengths, most of which aren't in the visible range and so we can't see. However, we can display those wavelengths outside of the visible range uh, as visible colour, but we have to understand what each of those different wavelengths is representing uh, and this provides a useful tool to interpret what's actually happening uh, within the image. So here's a few photographs just to demonstrate that point. There's uh, uh, the, top, the image in the top left is shown in natural colour, so plants appear green, whereas the other images were exploiting, or the camera is exploiting wavelengths outside the visible range. It's recording information in the near infrared and the short wave infrared perhaps and displaying those bands as colour so that we can see them. And obviously it emphasises different parts of the imagery. So uh, green vegetation no longer appears green. It, uh, it's being shown in, tr in uh, a, a visible wavelength, being um, projected on the screen in a visible wavelength, but it's actually showing uh, the reflectance of the surface in uh, other wavelengths that aren't in the visible range. So just to demonstrate that point um, uh, graphically, here we have a spectra of a, um, a, a range of different plants and uh, you can see highlighted there the uh, blue wavelength range, the green, the red and the near infrared. Obviously we can see in the blue, the green and the red, but we can't see in the near infrared. But if we uh, project uh, this, the, the imagery on the screen or on a map, with the near infrared, then we can exploit this characteristic um, uh, red edge that I talked about in a previous video that's indicative of actively growing uh, green vegetation. So here we have a series of uh, true colour and false colour images from a remotely sensed uh, image. And on the far left is true colour, showing each of the uh, visible wavelengths in their natural band. And then we have uh, three false colour composites, uh, the, the red, uh, image there, second from the left, is displaying that near infrared characteristic of actively growing vegetation as red, and so all the vegetation appears red. Uh, alternatively, uh, the two on the left are exploiting uh, short wave infrared wavelengths, and so it's showing uh, elements characteristic of the reflectance further down the spectrum as those different visible wavelengths. And this, you can see from these four images that exploiting these different wave bands um, really highlights different elements in the landscape and we can then hone in on different things, we can better see patterns in the landscape and what's happening uh, uh, between different elements. And here's another example of that same concept. So we have uh, on the left hand side we have what we call a true colour composite so red is displayed as red, blue is blue, and green is green. And in those small individual uh, images at the bottom, you can see um, the discrete wavelengths uh, that are recorded for the red band, the blue band, and the green band, and they're combined together to form a, the, the, the true colour composite. On the right-hand side, we have the, uh, what we call a false colour composite. So we're attributing uh, wavelengths outside the visible, uh, and we're, dis we're displaying the wavelengths outside the visible as visible colour. So here we have uh, 
2.1 micrometers, which is in the short wave infrared, 1.8 micrometers in the short wave infrared, and one micrometer in the near infrared. And they're displayed as red, blue, and green, respectively. And that gives us uh, an image that we can interpret visually, uh, and it also provides contrast between different uh, spectral reflectances outside of that visible range. So just to further emphasize those points, here is a false color image from uh, the bushfires in Tasmania in 2013. Healthy vegetation in this image is displayed as red and you can see those black areas where the vegetation has been burnt through. This really highlights the contrast between the, uh, the healthy vegetation and, and the, the, those areas damaged by fire. Also within the image you can see those areas of contrasting red. So you can see the very healthy or uh, perhaps um, uh, areas of vegetation with more uh, better access to water or uh, better soils, perhaps their agricultural areas compared to uh, native areas of native vegetation or, or cropping compared to pasture. Uh, and so the, the brighter, more vibrant reds and pinks indicate a, a more actively growing uh, areas of vegetation. Here we have another uh, false colour image that emphasises the, con uh, the contrast between uh, exposed soil, which in this image is displayed as red or magenta, uh, and the uh, actively growing vegetation, which is displayed as green, as you would expect, and also the, uh, the, the very blue and vibrant water. And this is achieved by selecting uh, which colours outside of the visible range to display as those visible colours. And finally, here we have a, an example from Esperance in Australia, another false colour image. The healthy vegetation is, in this case is displayed as, as bright green. The grasslands is a, is a slightly different shade of green and the exposed soil is a very vibrant pink. And this is achieved by displaying short wave bands in the red, uh, near infrared bands, in, uh, a near infrared band in the green and the green band as blue. So that's uh, image interpretation. I hope you found it useful. Our next uh, video will be looking at uh, different characteristics of imagery.